Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Sometimes the news we receive is so good that we have a hard time believing it. While that is true in many cases, too often we are skeptical about positive happenings. We're like Jesus' disciples, and especially Thomas, who doubted the resurrection. Actually, we understand how Thomas felt. It is sometimes hard to believe. That's just when faith comes in. Believing where we have not seen. May God open our hearts and our spirits to receive with confidence the good news of the resurrection morning. Join me in this call to worship. Sometimes the news we receive is so good we have a hard time believing it. That's true. Too often we are skeptical about positive happenings. We are like Jesus' disciples, Thomas, who doubted the resurrection. That's just where faith comes in, believing where we have not seen. May God open our hearts and our spirits to receive confidence with the news of Jesus Christ. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set off and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over and looked into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And he said to her, do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father, and to your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
Paul writes in Corinthians, he says, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and in knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. For God is faithful, for by God you are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The good news this morning is that our communities, no matter how uh, troubled they might be, can become communities of abundant living, abundant health. The health of our human bonds and our abundant community depends on some elemental customs. This is true in marriage and in our deepest friendships. It is also surely true in the bonds of parents and the child and in working relationships that require some elemental customs. These elemental customs are, do you listen? Do you honor your commitments? Do you show up on time? Do we have the ability to work together with others? And do we encourage each other? And this last one is probably the hardest one of all. Do we ever say we're sorry and really mean it? Or do we say when we say sorry, I'm sorry I got caught? These elements point to the convention of caring. They highlight the cardinal practices in the long-term nourishment of any link between one person and another and our ability to live in and be part of an abundant community. To ignore these practices of caring is to place at best a monetary stress on the bonds of any relationship. At worst, it courts disaster on the bonds of any relationship. As we have observed, lived, and worked with and in communities, certain practices have appeared to be essential for, well, an abundant community. When present, communities grow strong, but when absent and treated lightly, the community is weakened and is in danger of great mischief. Here are five elements of community that make for a strong, healthy, and spiritually alive community. For you see, this is what Easter is. It is about a strong and healthy and spiritually alive resurrection people. First, we pray for one another. Second, we speak honestly with one another. Third, we encourage each other. Fourth, we be present in the moment as well as with the person. And fifth, we name and claim all the goodness that is shown in our community, whether it be ours or somebody else's. Jesus shared these matters with his gathered community, i.e., his disciples. From the start, Jesus also taught these essential principles as the basis for maintaining a strong, sound, and healthy relationship, not only with one another, but with God. And then living that relationship out before a larger community. Jesus did understand human nature and action so much so that he was looking into our relationships and into our community today and spoke to us and declared their importance in maintaining our relationships with each other and others who are yet to join us as well as maintaining that relationship with Christ himself. These common elements are the practices of a, an abundant community, a growing community, a strong community, a living community, and they can be obtained. I believe it is important 
to impress upon each other the ability to achieve and maintain these elements. We need to be challenged to pray for one another, speak honestly with one another, encourage one another, be present with one another, and name and claim the goodness of all communities. This helps us maintain not only a short-term relationship with one another, but a long-term re relationship. Paul reminds us we are in a race, and this race has to be run to the very end. I believe that through the resurrection, Jesus challenges us and our pride, our self-control, and our self-conceived importance, and just about everything else about us that might seem to be who we are. My wife and I, from time to time, love to dance. Well, it's at least what I call it. Most people wouldn't call what I do much dancing. We love to go to weddings because we love to take a time together to dance. You know, even when we're not dancing and music is playing, our feet are moving. Many times, we find ourselves weighed down by the lack of abundance. But when we're dancing, the abundant community is always there. We speak honestly with one another. We are present in the moment. We encourage one another. And we always say, you know, you're getting better at dancing. Or this was a fun dance. Christ is tugging at us to step out on the hardwood floors of our lives and dance. Dance the dance of life, spiritually and physically. Whether the music is playing a waltz, a jazz, pop, rock, country, or even, God forbid, a rap tune. Begin the dance as a, an abundant community for Jesus. You see, I believe the dance of life is a sacred place. Jesus is waiting for you and I to join him on the floor and dance this dance of life, love, caring, and service, and mentoring. By dancing with Jesus, the possibilities of a resurrected community and an abundant life, well, comes through dancing together. For us, with us, and through us. Truly, come dance with me. And come dance with Jesus.